This is what it looks like, some of the latest pictures that we've gotten today. A lot of questions, right? How many answers? Hardly any. Like, where's the oil headed? Is a wind shift going to push it more toward Louisiana? Chad Myers has been following this for us, uh, and uh, he's going to join me here in just a little bit. And by the way, then there's the economic impact. It's a, is it a threat to wildlife? And there's some folks out there, people have been asking me in my community, hey, um, is the price of shrimp going to go up? You know, is the can you get can you still get crawfish anywhere? I mean, just basic stuff that you'd expect to see at the grocery stores that you start to wonder if this thing's going to dissipate. It's going to make a big economic impact, positive and negative for some people. There will be people that make money on this. There will be a lot of people, the working people, that lose a lot of money on this. Is there any chance that the, you look? You, you and I, we had this interview yesterday with the guy at BP, and he was yeah. brave. He was brave to come on sure. because we were. I, I thought it was pretty. I was hard on him, but only as hard as I think the American people want answers for. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look like they have a handle on this. It doesn't they look don't. like they know what they're doing. It doesn't look like they know if they're ever going to be able to cap these leaks. Am I wrong? Only in the fact that they believe that, and, and this has been proven before, that when they make this well, the connecting well, the two months out before it's done well, and they connect it to the well that's leaking now, they will be able to shut this oil off. Absolutely. Well, they're getting a lot of heat. Uh, they were at a hearing today. This yeah. is uh, Senator Cantwell uh, of Washington asking the chairman and BP's president just the same questions that you and I were just talking about right now. D, take that on this router, if you would. Obviously, we, we can't keep from being sued, but yes, we're, we have said exactly what we mean. We're going to pay the legitimate claims. Okay, so if it's a legitimate claim, a harm to the fishing industry, both short-term and long-term, you're going to pay? We're going to pay all legitimate claims. If it's an impact for business loss from tourism, you're going to pay? We're going to pay all legitimate claims. To state and local governments for lost tax revenue, you're going to pay? Question mark. Long-term damages to the Louisiana fishing industry and its brand. I, I can't. I, I can't quantify or speculate on long term. I don't know how to define it. Additional troubles from depleted fisheries to recover and their recovery. We're going to pay all legitimate claims. We're going to pay all legitimate claims. You always wonder when you start hearing someone repeat a line over and over again, what's going on here? Well, I, I think that that was his way of saying, I'm not taking the fifth, but I, yes. I think he, he just didn't want to say yes. And I don't know why, just yes, no, put question mark on that one, but that's okay. You know what, the, the, the shrimping industry will be affected for a very long time, and he didn't want to be able to say, no, we're not paying this for, he didn't want to say we're gonna pay for 25 years. Bottom line, uh, this is a stalemate, really. We, we have oil leaking in the Gulf. Yes. We don't have a solution for it. Correct. They keep telling us they're going to try something they think will work. It doesn't work, and then they prepare to do something else. Um, Rick, let me tell you some of the other things. <laughs> People are getting their hair cut because they're going to sprinkle the hair in the Gulf of Mexico because hair will absorb the oil. A company in, in Quebec is, is shredding peat moss because they can spread peat moss on the oil. It will absorb the oil, not absorb water, it's hydrophobic, so it's not going to get wet, but it's going to absorb all the oil. Then how do you pick it up? Well, and here's they're, they're going to put hay on the beaches. There are so many other things that we could, they're, they're going to try. Here's the other problem. Uh, BP, to a certain extent, is doing some of this. They're saying, oh, yeah. yeah, it's our oil, but it wasn't our oil rig, and right. somebody else was processing uh, the, the lines that were coming out of there. This gets confusing. Listen to some of the uh, testimony today. Uh, th this is exactly what we're talking about. It's not my fault. It's the other guy's fault. Take a listen. Transocean, as owner and operator of the Deepwater Horizon drilling rig, had responsibility for the safety of drilling operations. What caused that sudden violent failure? Was the well properly designed? Were there problems with the casing or the seal assembly? Was the casing properly cemented and the well effectively sealed? Two things can be said with some certainty. The casing shoe was cemented some 20 hours prior to the tragic incident. And had the BOP functioned as expected, this catastrophe may well not have occurred. Why did Transocean's blowout preventer, the key fail-safe mechanism, fail to shut in the well and release the rig. Were all appropriate tests run on the cement and the casing? Were the blowout preventers damaged by the surge that emanated from the well? Halliburton, as a service provider to the well owner, is contractually bound to comply with the well owner's instructions on all matters relating to the performance of all work-related activities. 
These are all wonderful questions. Yes. But why are they being asked now? And any good self-respecting journalist and any good self-respecting lawmaker mm -hmm. and any good self-respecting agency director who is responsible for this type of story should be kicking themselves in the butt right now and saying, why didn't I think of this three, four years ago when I saw them putting these wells in? Because, nothing, because this happens to us all the time in this country. It has not, this is the first one that failed like this. This is the problem. Had we had one that failed that didn't put down four million gallons of oil already, but, and, they, and they could have fixed it, then they would have had a, a go-to plan. But this is one of the only ones that's 5,000 feet down. That's what no, makes the no, difference. No, 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 no. Well, the guy told us yesterday, he said, yeah, we've got a few who are more deep, but this is about as deep as it gets well, no, for these guys. The Chevron has them deeper. There, there are, there are, this is This not, close to the Gulf? Absolutely. In the Gulf. Absolutely. This is not the only rodeo out there. So we should this be... This may not be the only problem out there. And how long before Chevron has this kind this of problem? This may not be the only blowout preventer that doesn't blow out prevent. Good point.